Hey guys, and welcome to my third installment of my series of James Cameron reviews. Today we're going to be talking about The Abyss, a movie that I'm sure many of you haven't seen and is a lot less popular than the first two we talked about by far. And for that reason, I'm going to keep this review 100% spoiler free in case you haven't seen it, which I'm assuming is the vast majority of people. This film stars Ed Harris as Bud, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantanio as Lindsay Brigman, and Michael Bean as Lieutenant Coffey. The plot synopsis of this film is very similar to the film Aliens. A nuclear submarine has been sunk, you have a team of SEALs and a team of petroleum workers that go to investigate what happened. And there's a mystery around how this happened, whether it's Russians or something else. It doesn't help that during all of this, they're in some of the deepest waters on Earth next to a massive abyss. Now I'll start by saying that this isn't one of my favorite Cameron films, but it is a really good one in my opinion. It really holds up well looking back at all the practical effects, the amazing, beautiful set pieces that they created for this movie and the fact that it feels dangerous because I think it was. This is legitimate underwater filmmaking and I remember reading that they filmed this in an old nuclear power plant and a lot of things went wrong and it was a very stressful set to work on so I can imagine that that's why this film comes off as so real and I'm sure a lot of the actors were feeling that this was very real because it probably was and it's very beautiful to look at it definitely paid off despite it being dangerous unfortunately it paid off in the visuals and that's something that James Cameron always seems to excel at and that's where he does his best storytelling these visuals are beautiful and you can see the inspiration from aliens and the inspiration that he would take later on to make Titanic not to mention that later this year next month Month actually for Avatar 2 it's titled Avatar 2 the way of water and he delayed that movie waiting for technology to catch up so that he could better motion capture real people using CGI while actually underwater needless to say he definitely has a thing for underwater filmmaking and he does a great job here so it's really cool to see how he took that inspiration even in his earlier filmmaking while mixing sort of an aliens flair to it and it makes a movie that i really enjoy and this film really feels like multiple movies so the first movie really is aliens-esque they're going through these dark tunnels and hallways in this submarine and it makes for some really good tension you feel claustrophobic not only during this part but throughout the film it makes me nervous i mean i caught myself breathing heavily my stomach's in knots it really works for me a lot of the tension comes from breathing because obviously the biggest issue with humans going underwater is the lack of oxygen so when some of the characters were underwater throughout the film they're in these suits that control the pressure and help with their breathing it makes a loud sound as they breathe as they breathe faster it's a very prominent sound it makes you nervous and it kind of reminds me of some space movies that did this really well but it really puts you there it makes you feel like you're underwater in these cramped spaces all the time with limited air it's really freaky and all the performances on top of that help to really sell this film and make it feel super real again i know some of it was but the performances are fantastic. Ed Harris as Bud does a great job. This is one of my favorite performances I think he's ever given. He acts out a full range of emotions here. He has one of the best yells too. There's a one scene in particular that he just, he grabs at your heartstrings. He, he's so good in this movie. And he plays off of Michael Bean's character, Lieutenant Coffey, really well. Bean plays a very different character this time around. And it's a really interesting role for him. And he does a great job. I would have loved to see more films with him in this particular role and Ed Harris has great chemistry with Lindsay in the movie played by Mary and I love their relationship in the film there's a lot of layers to it and I think James Cameron does great in all his films when it comes to relationships it's never fully one-dimensional even if he doesn't have a lot of time to develop it it feels sort of impactful and it doesn't feel surface level at all. And as I said, there's a lot of parts to the film making it almost feel like multiple movies. When we get into the second part, I think it loses a little bit of its steam. So I'd say in the second act, it kind of slows down the pacing slightly. It's still really interesting and I like where the story went, but I have to admit it did slow down a little bit. And then as we get into the third act, the movie fell apart a little bit for me. I was a little surprised because James Cameron usually has a much more cohesive script. But in this case, I felt like it 
some of the things didn't need to happen at all. There were certain plot elements that almost distracted from the more interesting stuff. And it almost felt like the third act existed to tie up some of those things. And a lot of the emotional moments had kind of ended already. As a viewer, you hit a climax and then you want to come down. It kind of felt like he was asking a little bit too much of the viewer later on into the film. With that said though, the thing that he's tying up at the end did add some intrigue and mystery throughout the film that maybe did add to it, so I can't say it's 100% even a negative, but I had to throw it out there. Overall, I really do like The Abyss. It's a cool movie to look into, and I encourage you to look up some things about it. Just some of the interesting things that they did for real to make this movie. There's a scene where Ed Harris has a helmet on, and they fill it with water, and he's supposed to be able to breathe it, but in reality, it's him with a helmet full of water, and he's holding his breath. I mean, there were certain scenes like that where it's like, there's no way they're having the actor do that, right? And then I go to look it up and it's like, no, they actually did this. It's crazy. I'm glad no one got hurt. I can imagine this was a very stressful movie to make, but it made for a damn good movie. So definitely go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's really surprising to me that it's not on Blu-ray. This movie would look incredible on Blu-ray, even better 4K. It's just a real shame that I had to watch this on DVD. And I'm really surprised you'd think a James Cameron film would be on Blu-ray. But for whatever reason, it's not yet. It would look really amazing. I cannot stress enough how beautiful some of these underwater shots are. It really feels real, like you're really involved in this situation. I have personally never seen another film pull off the tension that this film pulls off and the feeling that it gives you as if you're literally underwater in an oil rig or in some little pod drowning. I don't know how to explain it. It makes you feel claustrophobic and it really brings out some emotion in you. I've never seen another film able to do that. And I think some of those real life shots and the practicality of this film are really to thank for that. I think the only other negative I have is maybe the film could have been slightly shorter and it kind of goes along with what I said earlier that the third act kind of falls apart a little bit. If it was maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes shorter, if they edited it a little bit more, I think it would have been a slightly better paced film. But again, I really do enjoy this film. And if you go in ready for a longer movie, slightly slow burn at certain parts, but with a huge payoff, I definitely would check out this movie. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. This concludes my third installment of my James Cameron series. Next up is T2, Judgment Day. I'm very excited to talk about that film. It's one of my favorite action movies of all time, so definitely stay tuned for that. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know, what do you think of The Abyss if you've seen it? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on it because I have really not talked to many people who have even seen it. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.